welcome all welcome to this new session where we are going to discuss about piping engineering course so this course have been uh, divided into 21 modules this is certification course all 21 modules have been organized in a systematical manner and this time this is a paid one okay the benefits of this course are you can choose any of the module out of 21 the list of 21 is here you can choose anyone as per your choice or requirements module wise certificate is available once you complete any of the module you will get the certificate for that particular module comfort of choosing time slot you can select any of the time slots which you like day night weekend weekdays anytime you like you can go for this course or you can go for any of the modules Common certificate for completing all 20 modules shall be provided at no extra cost. Once you complete all the modules, you will be given a course completion certificate also. So if you see, uh, we have uh, listed all the course links module wise in the description along with the link for PDF file. This uh file is available in pdf format also the link for the same is there in description you can download and once you download that you can click over any of the course module you can directly go to that page and you can complete that course okay if you want to uh, look into its agenda what is covered in particular module you can click over this and you will get the detailed agenda for a particular module once you look into the detailed agenda and you feel this is valuable and you can learn new thing then you can always select that particular module so this is how this course is uh, configured i'm sure you are going to enjoy this course and it will be valuable for your uh, professional life so let us start with the course if you have any query you can always send it to me at this email id so see you in the course welcome all welcome to this new section where we are going to discuss the piping engineering this is the introduction uh, part where we are going to cover few things so that we can understand what is piping engineering okay so let us see what we are going to cover in this section first of all under uh, introduction to piping engineering we will try to understand the global oil and gas value chain okay its upstream midstream downstream uh, flow that we are going to understand then we we'll look into what is the scope of piping engineering there will be introduction to piping layout stress material okay 3d admin part so those things will be discussed under introduction part then we'll have a look into piping components okay we have so many uh, components in piping industry we'll just look into a uh, few of the components and we we'll try to understand how these component comprise into a piping system okay so this will be again a very interesting part then third part we we'll look into the epc organogram okay if we look into the engineering part piping discipline specifically there will be a few stakeholders we we'll look into how each and every stakeholder is connected with each other and what are their roles with respect to piping engineering so we'll look into role and contribution in overall cost of the project with respect to piping okay we'll see how piping plays an important role with respect to cost of the project okay we we'll look into various aspects which are uh, uh, adding into the cost so how piping is playing a role there okay percentage wise we'll look into that part also then major responsibilities of piping engineering discipline those will be listed out and we'll try to understand what piping engineers are doing okay then this is again a very important part where is deliverables if a piping discipline is there layout stress material 3d admin what they are going to deliver during the course of the project so we'll list out all the deliverables and we'll look into each and every deliverable one by one and we'll look into what are the various inputs required to prepare all these inputs all the deliverables okay how those deliverables will be used by piping and how those deliverables will be used by other discipline once those are finalized so this is going to be very important part introduction part 
we are going to cover all these sections. This is uh, going to be very useful while doing our engineering activities. So let us see how it goes. Project life cycle. Project life cycle is an important uh, thing which we need to understand while executing any of the project. In this part, we are going to take example of oil and gas one of the project and we'll look into each and every stage right from the starting to the end okay so in this what we are going to do we are going to uh, understand first the broad phases of any of the project then we'll list out all the stages which are there in any of the oil and gas project then we'll relate each and every stage with respect to its broad phase and at the same time we'll look into all the deliverables which shall be delivered during the life cycle of the project at each stage okay every phase has its own cycle right from starting to end but we'll look into each and every phase each and every stage all the deliverable right from starting to end which will be delivered by various stakeholders we we'll look into all the stakeholders which are going to perform those activities while delivering the deliverables and we'll also look into purpose of each and every stage and phase so this is the whole agenda we are going to cover in this uh, video where we are going to cover the project life cycle welcome all welcome to this new section where we are going to discuss design basis as you know in piping industry in process industry design basis is a basis of design for any of the plant okay so this is the basic document which we need to refer throughout the life cycle of the project so we need to know what are the various items and activities which we are going to cover in design basis this is the first thing which we need to develop in our engineering part so what we have done we have divided this part into three sections okay in any of the design basis we have to provide some introduction about project few abbreviation whatever we are going to use in this project that that we need to list out then definitions and parties whosoever are involved we list out all these uh, stakeholders then unit of measurement si unit metric unit whatever we are going to use we have to mention in design basis then design life this is very important we have to mention in our design basis for what life we are going to design the plant then codes and standard whatever codes and standard specification we are going to use in any of the project we have to list out then order order of precedence this is also important in case of any controversy whatever we have to follow we have to refer then we have to list out in this section then requ regarding materials requirement although we have a different uh, document for this pms but we have to list out few basic things in this section that is corrosion allowance allowable stresses etc each and everything we have to mention in the starting which will be basis for our design then design philosophies okay whatever requirement for plot plan and equipment layout are there from client side that also we have to look into and we have to capture in this design basis again general clearances and accessibility everything will be discussed in detail various piping systems whether it is pipe rack pump piping all these things we need to keep in mind various clauses which are typically uh, applicable in any of the process plan will be listed out here and we'll discuss into detail piping flexibility and support although stress design basis will be separately issued but basic design requirement shall be covered here also then whatever we have to going to deliver in the project based on client requirement with respect to our contract all those deliverables will be listed out in the design basis itself then various clauses related to insulation painting coating okay entity requirements everything will be basic clauses will be listed out in the design basis then something called appendices will be there where we can add many standards okay design related uh, clauses which are finalized at later stage of the project we can capture it in appendices also even if any additional requirement comes at later stage that can also be added at later stage of the design basis later stage of the project into the design basis so this is going to be very informative session so let us look into 
uh, each and every aspect all the clauses whatever is required will be discussed in detail so let's start with our session hello all welcome to this new video where we are going to discuss what is pipe in this section we are going to discuss uh, everything related to pipe for example we'll start with introduction to piping engineering here we'll try to understand what are different discipline in under piping for example piping layouts material stress so we'll talk about that then we'll have a brief a quick uh, section on piping component in other videos we'll discuss in detail but just to give introduction to piping component we'll cover this section here then we'll try to understand what are piping systems what other components are there within a piping system along with pipe we'll have just a quick look on this piping system then we'll uh, understand what is pipe what is pipe schedule then plastic pipe what is pipe plastic pipe and what are different types of plastic pipes what are different resins fibers etc everything we are going to cover in this part then jacketed pipe where we are going to use what is its application what are advantages and disadvantages steam traced line why we go for steam traced electrical traced lines we'll go into each and every part then lined and fb coated pipes this is also very important and a very good application in piping industry so we'll look into this section also then we'll have a quick look bit on advantages and disadvantages of non-metallic pipes okay we'll do some comparison here we'll have a small discussion on non-metallic pipe advantages and disadvantages then uh, this topic will be incomplete if we don't discuss asme 36.10 which is a dimensional standard this is a global standard which is used to get the dimension we'll have a discussion on this part also so this is going to be very interesting part so let us see how it goes we'll start with introduction to piping engineering welcome all welcome to this new section where we are going to discuss the valve classification and their useful facts in this video what we have done we have classified the uh, sections into five parts in first part we are going to discuss the classification we'll try to understand what is valve, what is its purpose and what are various classification then under isolation valve we'll understand gate valve bell valve plug butterfly and dbb valves so these all valves will be discussed individually then regulation valves globe needle butterfly diaphragm bell valve plug valve all these valves shall be discussed under non return valve section swing valve lift dual plate check valves these will be discussed so this is how we are going to classify the valves in three sections and each and every type will be discussed in detail then along with that we'll understand uh, the operational and accessibility aspects also okay when the valves are placed in horizontal or vertical uh, stem when how we are going to operate the instrument uh, level gauges then lever operated valves while standing or sitting how we are going to operate the valves okay general operational accessibility factors so these section will also be discussed along with all these classification and individual valves so this is going to be very interesting part let us see how it goes let's start with our session welcome all welcome to this section in this section we are going to cover the isolation valves valves are really important part of piping uh, industries it it helps uh, in integration of uh, piping systems so we are in this section we are going to cover the isolation valves five type of valves we are going to discuss in detail gate valves ball valves plug valves butterfly dbb these five we are going to discuss in detail for example what is gate valve what type of gate valves are there what type of uh, stems wedges are there so we are going to discuss in detail okay the type of valve what is its punk function how what are the advantages and disadvantages everything we are going to cover for particular section so let us start with the first part that is gate valves regulation valves this is the topic of this section in this section we are going to cover uh, all type of regulation valves the globe 
needle, butterfly, diaphragm, ball valve, plug valves. Okay, so these are the commonly used uh, regulation valves in our piping industry. So we, what we are going to discuss in this section, we are going to uh, discuss each and every type in detail. Okay, its body of construction, then its function, how it performs, how it functions, what are various uses, what are advantages and disadvantages. So this is how we are going to cover the whole section related to regulation valves. So let us start with the first one that is globe valve. Welcome all. In this section, we are going to discuss all about flanges. We'll try to understand what is flange, slip on flange, socket welded flange, screwed flange, lap joint flange, weld neck flange and blind flange. We'll look into each and every uh, flange type, how it is connected with the pipe what are its function, how it is useful in piping industry. So each and every topic we will try to cover in detail. Then we will understand uh, pressure temperature rating. This is also very important uh, spec PT rating. We will understand the pressure temperature rating definitions. Then we will take an example of one of the materials A105 to understand further detailed pipe pressure temperature ratings. Then with respect to flanges, we'll again uh, try to understand how this PT rating is connected with flanges. Okay, then all this discussion is uh, incomplete if we don't discuss flange standards 16.5 and 16.47. Then along with that, we'll do some comparison between two types of 16.47 flanges that is series A and series B. Okay, so in this section, we are going to cover what is flange, types of flanges, PT rating, PT rating with respect to flanges, then flange standards, then comparison between series A and series B type of flanges. So this is going to be very informative uh, session. So let's start. Welcome all. In this video, we are going to cover another topic that is piping components. Piping components are very important part of any piping system. In this part, we are going to cover flanges in detail, strainers and traps, stream traps. Along with that, we are going to cover a few things. For example, pipe, piping components. We will try to understand pump piping, suction piping, where we will try to cover all the components which are already available in pump piping. So in this section, what we are going to cover, what is flange? and slip on flange, socket welded flange, screwed flange, lap joint flange, weld neck, blind flanges. So we'll try to cover each and everything related to this, where how these are connected with uh, other components and what are their purposes, when we are going to use which flange, that is going to cover in this section. Then in second part, we are going to cover the strainers, Y type strainer, bucket type strainer, T type strainer, conical strainer. So what is all about strainer we are going to cover in this section then as we have discussed we are going to cover few components uh, through discussion of pump piping pump suction piping then the fourth section will be steam traps we'll try to understand what are steam traps what are different types of steam traps mechanical thermostatic thermodynamic we'll understand the mechanical functioning basic principles of each and every trap so that we can uh, understand the basic purpose and uh, how and where we are going to use which type of uh, trap that will be covered so this is all about piping components which is which will be covered in this section so this is again going to be a very informative section i'm sure you are going to like it let us start with the first part Plot plan. Overall and unit plot plan are the basic documents which a piping layout engineer need to understand. There are many aspects and parameters which need to be taken care while executing this deliverable. So first of all, we'll look into various plot plan definitions and various stages a plot plan or overall plot plan goes through throughout the life cycle of the project. Then all the inputs which are required during uh, development of the plot plan will be discussed. 
then there are many guidelines which need to be taken care of while locating the column furnace and reactor compressors and pumps exchangers and air coolers drums and pipe racks these are the basic equipment which will be available in most of the plot plants so there are basic guidelines which has to be taken care of while developing a plot plant so we'll go through each and every guideline which are there and we need to take care then we'll have a look into the checklist to finalize the plot plan we need to refer we need to fulfill many requirements we'll list out few of the things and we'll check during the development of the plot plan so this is how we are going to cover this topic let us start with the agenda pipe rank is a very important part for any piping layout for any plot plan for any process plant in this part we are going to discuss all the aspects related to piping and layout for pipe rack so we'll try to cover the inputs required to start the piping layout for pipe rack then at the starting the conceptual design we have to do for that we have to prepare a interconnection diagram we need to calculate the width of the rack number of tiers based on our interconnection diagram which we have already prepared in the first part then all the operational maintenance and accessibility requirements shall be discussed how to decide the elevation of transverse beam that concept shall also be discussed then design constitution guideline for placing pipes on pipe rack battery limit configuration there are three three type of battery limit configuration we will discuss in detail each and every configuration the supporting and flexibility requirements that that shall also be discussed in this part whatever equipment we are going to place on pipe rack platforms above pipe rack okay so these are all the design aspects which we need to know while designing our pipe rack layout okay then again 3d deliverables which are associated with pipe rack shall also be discussed so this is how we are going to cover this part so let us start with this section welcome all compressors play a very important part in any of the process plant this is going to be the topic of this section process compressor piping and layouts okay let us see what we are going to cover in this section first of all we look into type of compressors which are commonly used in piping industry then various compressor drives okay whether it is steam driven electric driven or gas driven we look into each and every detail okay with respect to drives again in any of the compressor layout we will be having many associated equipment okay so each and every equipment we will discuss in detail how these are associated with compressor who is going to provide it how we are uh, going to locate in our layout and how we are going to do the piping with respect to each and every associated item with compressor so in next part with respect to stream time turbines will also look into the associated items if it is a stream driven then there will be few associated items with the stream driven uh, compressors then also important part is deciding elevation of the compressor okay there are so many factors which we need to consider while finalizing the elevation of any compressor in any of the piping uh, layout of compressor we we'll look into each and every aspect how we are going to finalize the elevation then few general layout requirements thumb rules which we need to take care while finalizing the compressor layout again for centrifugal and reciprocating compressor whatever layout constitutions are there we have listed out and we'll discuss in detail so this is all we are going to discuss in this section this is going to be very informative section so let us start with the agenda welcome all column piping and layout is the important part in any piping industry in many piping project so this plays a critical role so let us look into this section in this section what we are going to discuss distillation operation first of all we'll discuss in detail what are the various associated items are there with respect to column how they are connected with each other how condenser reboiler circuits are there okay these are typical things which are available in each and every column so this is very important section 
then we'll look into all the inputs which are required to start the column piping and layout this is again a very important part once we have all the inputs with us then only we can start working on piping and layout section of column okay then this is also important part to decide the bottom tangent elevation although in most of the cases it is given in the process pin IDs, but still there are many factors which are important to uh, look into to decide the bottom tangent elevation then again tower internals are again very important part which we need to understand while performing our piping layout this will be again discussed in detail nozzle orientation in any of the column will have so many nozzles with us okay so every time we have to go for preparation of nozzle orientation so what we are going to do in this section we will look into each and every type of nozzle which are there on any of the columns and we will look into all the clauses which are important to decide the orientation of nozzle with respect to column layout okay for example manhole we look into all the permutation combinations which are there which can be uh, which we need to consider while finalizing the nozzle orientation again feed nozzle orientation this is again very important section S starting point uh, where the feed is coming into the column we look into this also column reboiler piping connection there will be various typical uh, configurations those also will be discussed here nozzle connections at top now we'll have few nozzles at top a top platform okay and bottom section also then so many instruments will be there throughout the column how we have to orient all those equipments all those nozzles with respect to access uh, to instruments then nozzle connections for instrument so each and everything will be discussed in detail so that we can do nozzle orientation for any column platform and ladder arrangement if you see in any of the column we have platforms we have ladders to reach up to different points to access uh, various items those will be discussed then column piping concept how we are going to route the piping with respect to column and associated items those concepts will be discussed here then also we'll look into the supporting and flexibility requirements which are typical for any of the columns column piping and layout so those things shall also be discussed then operation and maintenance aspects shall also be discussed because without this this everything is uh, not worth so we have to know what are the operation and maintenance requirements those shall be discussed in detail in the end so this is going to be very important section let us look into each and every part how we are going to finalize our column piping and layout whatever is required okay and whatever things we need to take care while finalizing the layout so let us start our session welcome to this new section where we are going to discuss the heat exchanger piping and layout what we are going to cover in this part we are divided in dividing this part into a few sections first part we are going to cover the definitions and classification of heat exchanger based on various criteria available and then construction and operating features for all type of heat exchangers so this is going to be very interesting part then to start for any piping layout for exchanger we need to have few documents with us we need to have that list with us by while starting the piping layouts for exchangers then how to fix its location in a plot plan all the criteria we need to discuss fixing elevation exchangers are uh, one of the equipment which for which the process is not giving the basic elevation bottom elevation so sometimes we have to as a layout engineer we have to finalize the elevation of an heat exchanger so that criteria we are going to we are going to discuss then all the layout aspects while doing the piping for exchanger we need to uh, understand so those aspects have been listed out and has been discussed then few of the layout aspects have been uh, explained with the help of 3d pictorial views in the end we'll have a few interesting facts with us with the help of those we can optimize our layout we can save few elbows we can save uh, some 
upgrade space so that an operator can move uh, properly to operate the valves and everything so those things shall be covered in this part so let us start with this section welcome all in this part we are going to discuss pump layout and piping what we are going to discuss in this section let us see what is pump common type of pumps used in our piping industry so this will be the first part where we are going to discuss the type of pumps then we'll understand what is npsh if it occurs if there is any problem related to npsh then how we are going to solve this what are the various options which we can go for to resolve the npsh problem then we'll understand what is uh, cavitation and what are the major causes how we can avoid it then important components of piping pump suction piping important components of pump discharge piping layout aspects of pump piping okay then stress consideration for pump piping so i'm sure this four section will cover all the layout aspects related to pump piping we'll try to look into different different type of pumps with uh, different piping configuration we'll try to understand why we go for that kind of configuration then we'll have few 3d model snaps where uh, we'll look into actual engineering part of the piping part then in the end we'll have a small session for seal plans pump seal plans are very important part for any pump layout we'll discuss all the seal plans but one seal plan in detail okay so this is how we are going to cover the pump piping and layout part so let us look into the detailed part we'll start with the first section now how we are going to answer all these questions how we are going to meet the expectations first of all we'll try to cover uh, isometric definition okay isometric sheet what are the various parts of that sheet then the main agenda will come to the main agenda understanding various sheets uh, various stages of uh, isometric sheet traveling before getting issued to site okay we'll try to understand all these various stages then we need to understand what is isometric tracker and what are the mandatory items which need to be there in any of the isometric tracker after that we'll try to understand pivot tables if many of you already know pivot table then it is okay even if you don't know what is pivot table how to create pivot table how to use pivot table we'll try to learn in this section how to create pivot tables and we'll do actual uh, practically how we can implement in our tracker we'll see in this video we'll create actual pivot tables showing the status of isometrics okay we'll take an example of isometric tracker we'll make pivot table and how we are generating the status of individual sheet we'll try to cover in this section then there is a there are few tools available in excel only we'll try to add those we'll use slicer activity in slicer tool with the help of this we can uh, further extract the data from uh, from our isometric tracker checker wise modeler wise line size everything we can extract so we'll practically implement all these things in our tracker and we'll try to get the actual data then we'll try to uh, combine pivot tables and slicers so we'll go one step further here we uh, created some pivot tables and we added slicer then we'll merge all these things okay so uh, so many things we can extract like how various sheets are asso associated with checker and modeler we'll combine uh, pivot tables and slicers so many uh, different reports we can generate and within seconds it will not take much time adding more than one pivot table then we'll add more pivot table in same sheet okay then again we'll merge it with the uh, slicers and uh, so many other things to generate uh, reports in a presentable way then uh, if if few people are not aware of pivot table we'll go one step further we'll look into pivot table options how we can improve the layout how we can implement so many tools available in the pivot table how we can display it in a proper manner how data can be sorted and how we can uh, extract so many reports we we'll look into these things in one section then filling data in tracker now tracker is a core part where so much has to be done manually okay so many time we have to fill data related to each and every sheet like how many sheets are checked we have to fill manually 
okay how many sheets are uh, how many sheets are being given to a checker or a modeler or for ifc so many things we have to do manually so how we can uh, fast track that manual activity we'll try to cover few things here okay how we can use the vlookup how we can automatically make a list from a file available in a folder then how we can copy files given in a list and we can place it into a folder okay so these are few of the tricks we can use to fast track our filling manual data in a tracker okay then in last we'll try to cover how we can track daily weekly or monthly progress of any checker any modeler with same data available in the tracker okay so this is our total agenda i'm sure we can if we uh, go through all these sections we can answer all the management questions all the hod's lead engineer any technical management person who can ask uh, any question related to isometric phase we can answer all those question if we go through all these sections welcome all welcome to this new section where we are going to cover few of the important codes and standard which are commonly used in piping industry we have divided into four module five modules first one is api 600 where we are going to cover uh, all the major clauses which are commonly used for wire design similarly for api 60 again we have covered all the uh, wire design related clauses these are very commonly used standards and everybody should know about major uh, clauses and where to use and how to use and whenever we want to design or something we have to go to these standards and refer many clauses so first of all we need to understand all these clauses whatever is mentioned in these uh, standards then only we can uh, refer in future again in astm standard we have we are going to cover the testing materials uh, seven to eight eight ASTM standard shall be covered along with 20 grades we have configured this section in such a way so that uh, uh, we can once we go through all these eight ASTM standard then we can refer any of the ASTM standard we'll look into all the configuration how uh, each and every steel is configured what are the constituents how they are impacting the properties how mechanical uh, properties are getting impacted with each and every composition element so those things will uh, look into in very detail then 36.10 this is a dimensional standard this is also commonly used in piping industry okay so this this will be explained here then api 598 this is again a very common uh, commonly used standard for valve inspection so we need to understand various clauses which are already mentioned in this standard so that we can go for valve inspection so this is how we are going to cover uh, this uh, section we are going to cover all these five modules so this is going to be very interesting but let's see how it goes so see you in the next part hello friends welcome to this presentation the topic of this presentation is pipe wall thickness calculation as per asme 31.3 31.3 is the process piping code and we'll look into many things related to pipe wall thickness now agenda of this presentation is as we have discussed pipe wall thickness calculation before that we'll look into what is pipe we'll try to understand what is pipe schedule relationship between outer inner diameters with respect to pipe wall thickness then why minimum thickness is always desirable okay then we'll go into details uh, few of the standards for example 36.10 that is dimensional standard for carbon steel and stainless steel we'll try to understand what is the this standard is all about and what is the total scope covered in this standard okay then we'll go into actual calculations for pipe wall thickness as per 31.3 we'll look into class conditions and line conditions both but before starting actual calculations we'll look into what are the various inputs which are required to start the calculation okay from where we get this input okay what is the starting point what is the initial information available before starting the pipe wall thickness then what are the various asm astm material standards which we need to refer while calculating all these pipe calculations then what is pt rating okay we'll discuss in detail what is pt rating concept and how it is useful while calculating the pipe wall thickness okay this is very important uh, concept without which this calculation we cannot do so we'll look into it 
in detail then we'll try to understand allowable stresses which is very important factor while calculating the pipe wall thickness we'll go into our engineering days where we used to study stress strain curve we'll look into it just to identify how these tensile strength and yield strengths are important with respect to allowable stress okay all these things are very basic things which we really need to know before calculating the pipe wall thickness so we'll look into a few of the unit system while calculating uh, the thickness we need to change some units so we look into all the unit system which all the units uh, all the code and standards are referring to while calculating the wall thickness then we'll after studying all these factors we'll study one actual pipe thickness for four inch carbon steel pipe we'll actually calculate the pipe thickness for that considering all these factors okay then we'll try to understand how line conditions and class conditions are different and how it is important to know both of the conditions so this is all about pipe wall thickness calculation whatever things are required to calculate wall pipe wall thickness we'll try to cover in this presentation so let us start with what is pipe hello friends welcome to this video in this video we are going to discuss the valve standard that is api 600 which is specifically designed for gate valves okay so let us see what we are going to cover in this uh, video first of all we'll try to understand the total scope of api 600 then we'll look into various important salient features which are uh, useful while designing the gate valves understanding the relationship between various standards while designing a gate valve, we have to go to any asme standard that we will try to cover and we'll look into uh, various factors which we need to refer in different standards then detailed discussion on valve stem types okay then there will be another detailed discussion on valve wedges then small uh, case study on bonnet thickness calculations with respect to api and asme 16.34 we'll take few practical examples to understand the difference then we look into various applicable clauses which are very important to design the gate valves we'll try to understand the end connection requirements then how we determine the inside diameter of the valve then various type of wedge and body guides what is wear travel and how do we calculate it and how it is important in valve design then various type of stems which we need to design there are many clauses mentioned in this uh, api 600 those we are going to understand and uh, look into then we'll try to uh, look into various clauses which are important for packing box and lalton ring then fugitive emission requirement which are uh, new addition to this api 600 then various type of valve operators in the end we will try to understand valve material clauses we will divide it into two parts as 600 uh, api 600 has done we will uh, look into two parts uh, non trim materials then trim materials so this is the whole agenda which we are going to cover in this video i am sure this is going to be very interesting one and will be very useful for everybody hello friends Welcome to this new video where we are going to discuss the construction material of construction MOC for valves based on ASTM standards. We are going to discuss many ASTM standards in detail in this video. I know this is kind of boring uh, topic. It is very difficult to remember most of these standard names and grades, but we are going to make it very interesting. I'm sure after this video, you will be able to remember many ASTM standard names as well as their grades. So what we are going to do in this video, we are going to divide this to four sections, carbon steel, high temperature steel, low temperature steel, stainless steel. So what we are going to do, we are uh, going to discuss in detail eight ASTM standards to each one for forging one for casting okay along with that we will discuss associated grades also so in this video we are going to cover eight ASTM standards and 20 grades so I'm sure once we go through each and every ASTM standard and grade then we will be able to remember 
rest of the things also so it will be very easy if we go through all these uh, four categories and go through each and every ASTM standard various clauses various uh, requirements will go through I'm sure this is going to be very interesting part in this part also uh, before this part, I'm, I'll say before starting this topic, I have already covered these four sections like what are valves, definition, classification, then individual valve based on isolation, regulation or non-return valve. Each and every valve we have covered already in different sections, different videos. I'm putting all these links into the uh, description. Recently, we have covered the API 600 clauses. Each and every clause we have discussed in detail. That video is also there. I'll put all these video links in description box. API 600, API 60, then impact testing, various clauses in 31.3. Though every top, uh, clause has been discussed and uh, illustrated in different videos. Allowable stresses, what are allowable stresses and how we are going to use it as per ASME 31.3 then pipe wall thickness how we calculate the pipe wall thickness everything step by step based on all the clauses pt rating and fluid level stresses everything we have discussed in detail so all these nine videos are already available on this channel and link for each and every video i'm putting in description welcome all welcome to this new section where we are going to discuss the two different codes of our piping industry okay one is useful process piping another is useful power piping okay we are going to discuss uh, major clauses from both the codes so that we can understand how these two codes are different from each other okay so what we are going to uh, do here we are going to discuss 12 major differences okay we'll look into both the codes each and every uh, related code close so that we can understand how these two codes are different from each other okay for example based on application okay where we are going to use these two codes allowable stresses how allowable stresses we are going to discuss this portion in very detail we'll first try to understand how uh, these allowable stresses are mentioned in standard what are these allowable stresses we'll take one or two examples then we'll look into further detail how this is different in 31.1 and 31.3 so this is going to be very detailed session then based on design life factor of safety what is this factor of safety and why uh, this is uh, important to understand the difference between two part we are going to dif discuss these things pipe wall thickness okay when we are going to design our piping based on 31.3 or 31.1 what is the major difference between the thickness of the pipe and why that difference is there so we are going to discuss all these things in this session variation on normal operation okay we will look into these clauses which are mentioned in both the codes and we will look into why these are different from each other post weld heat treatment this is again a very important part we will look into various clauses uh, which are different in two standards random inspection and examination this is a very important uh, factor in piping industry whether it is process or power piping we need to understand what are the various clauses mentioned in the codes and how they are different from each other then related to testing we'll try to understand what is hydrostatic uh, test pneumatic test service test and what are the various clauses mentioned in these two codes so that we can understand what are the differences uh, are there so this is how we are going to cover each and every clause 12 major difference shall be covered here and then we can understand how these two basic codes of piping industry are different from each other so i'm sure this is going to be a very uh important and uh, informative session so let us see what are new things we can learn from this session so uh, let's start with the first difference